You have CIA sources who told you that something's up at yep. Vegas. Something funny's going on at Vegas. Who? Jackson will instruct the uh, witness not to answer on journalist equipment. Gotcha. What did you hear? Yeah, I'm not asking for their identity. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. What'd they tell you? <coughs> I got contacted in the morning. Got contacted by individuals assigned to the surf teams, CIA assassination squads. Who had people inside the hostage rescue team in Vegas, and they said that he was uh, selling weapons to the jihadis, and that they had paraphernalia of jihadis from more the Middle East. He was an arms dealer. And because the Saudis were having a civil war, they were having an event in, uh, with the Saudi military, over 10,000 of them in Las Vegas that weekend uh, as part of a larger event. Uh, and that as basically in, inside the Saudi Arabian civil war, that they used the arms deal to get weapons inside the United States and that they then killed uh, the Patsy and then carried out the operation. Uh, and that the whole thing uh, was basically a Saudi civil war. And a lot of that later came out. Came out where? I mean, it came out in the news that he went to the Middle East. It came out that he had been involved in arms dealing. I then also had to sign non-disclosures that I, I can't get into subsequently with uh, other information. You've signed non-disclosures? Mm -hmm. With who? Can't talk about it. Okay. What about? What's the general topic that you can't disclose? I can't talk about it. Okay, so it's apparently there is some non-disclosure agreement that you signed with some unnamed person that is relevant to the allegations that you were making about Vegas? Yes, sir. Okay, and you, you can't, you, for reasons of that non-disclosure, you can't disclose anything about that today? No, I can't. Okay. Was that a, was that a government person that you did non-disclosure with? Was it a corporate entity? Same instruction uh, not to answer on grounds of the journal. Was it a real person or an imaginary person? Oh, it's real. It's a real person, so there is a contract. If we needed it, we could get it. Do you I own already, a copy? I already told you it exists. Do you own a copy? We have a copy of that, don't we? Yes, we have a copy. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I do want to know, what did you agree to do? I can't get into the specifics of the non-disclosure agreement. You're asking sources on Vegas, and we have particularly good ones on that. Okay. Yes, I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement before I was allowed to see something. Okay. By the way, I, I couldn't sell this on air. I don't know, Zach. That's the stuff I wasn't at liberty to say. He just said it. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks, <laughs> Can Zach. you believe that? I'm not talking about 90, that's crazy. 90% of the um, had to connect some dots because what they pulled off here in Vegas was just, just too far. So first and foremost, what we have is, and this is public knowledge, uh, you have the Foros Fund Management Group, the LLC, putting $42 million worth of put options on the MGM on Oh, August I forgot 14th. that. Yeah, I mean, a record put option the week before. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's just part of it. So, I mean, you, you can't look past that. That's obvious. But also what we have here is the private military company, the Saudi Arabian-based ET, ETS risk management company. And that's confirmed, too. Everything the caller is saying is documented. Because so, this, this is the final pieces you had. You had all this royalty there, and you had the Saudi Air Force there that week. So yeah, this ETS Risk Management Company is a PMC that's real shady, and they don't work now within the government because who's in the White House? But they did work with, during during Libya with the Clintons. If you know, I got some guys down here in the forensic accounting. If you look into the contract, so let's start over. Zach's did. recently gotten out of the military and the whole intelligence area. We'll leave it at that. Called him a lot of good info in the past six months. So just start back over because this is really important. Right. So the timeline's pretty I mean, unprecedented, let alone with, you know, so you get the $42 million worth of put options done by the, by the, uh, the George Soros Fund Management Group. And also you have, a, you have a contract being fulfilled by ETS Risk Management. But this, isn't, this, this contract was not fulfilled by DOD. Okay, so this is sort of a, <laughs> this is where it gets tricky, but they were working and there are PMCs that work kind of in vacuums in Libya, in Syria, and they do certain drills stateside as well. But they were there that weekend. Everybody knows they were there that weekend. Are you talking and about like, like those CIA uh, paramilitary teams? So this, so this is a private company that's ran, that, that, that is actually ran, and you could pull them up, ETS, but they are ran out of Saudi Arabia. But they, they, did, they did work uh, during 2013 in Libya, and that's fiasco. So when you're saying, and people bat their eyes saying that this is Islamic, 
this is Islamic, not in the sense that it's done by Islamic groups, but in a way, ISIS itself was the creation of these private military groups. And if you want to, you know, back in the day, they, they termed like al Qaeda, And this is real. So you have these private military companies that are backed and ran by the deep state, you know, creating this chaos around the world. And with full validation, 100 percent ETS risk management was on the ground in Vegas that night. And this gentleman who you have on who's talking about these choppers um, being in the area, he's spot on. And the issue, the next thing I got to bring up is the forensic accounting that's going to be brought up because there's individuals that are aware of this in today's day and age. When you have these transfers and you're transferring large sums of money, people in the intelligence agencies who are either in or out are not going to stay quiet. And this is big, and this stuff's coming out right now. Wow. You know what? Stay there, Zach, because we've got a guest coming on, but we'll push him back one more segment that we're going to get him on. I don't want you to be able to come back and lay all this out because I already knew all this because I, I saw it in mainstream news that Soros had a record shorts against MGM the week before. We're going to show that article when we come back from break. Uh, anybody can search it in five seconds and find it. Uh, and then we're also going to come in and show all these groups that the caller just talked about. And the Saudis having some giant military meeting with their people that week while this is happening. I mean, what in the world is going on? This is some real deep state stuff going on here. Multinational garbage. And we're all getting different pieces of what happened in Vegas. Some of them have been accurate. Some of them haven't been accurate completely. But we've been ferreting it out. We've been incredibly accurate. Uh, when it's come up with the fact that our law enforcement sources said he had Antifa and Middle Eastern stuff in his room, that he traveled to the Middle East, that came out a week later. Uh, but right now, finishing up with some of these callers, Zach uh, has given us great intel, says he's out of Army intelligence and other things. Uh, he's he's uh, retired now, but been calling in for six months, giving us a lot of really great points. But I don't just go off, you know, what he says. I am reminded of the 40 plus million dollar record put option on MGM the week before by Soros and that the fact that the owners are big SJWs and fund Soros and other groups and get their employees to give money and then match it or that, that, that the Saudi Arabian Air Force and military was having a big convention in Vegas that week and, and all the rest of it uh, what was the hostage rescue team the HRT team on Monday morning trying to tell me they also wanted to know, how'd you say they'd probably attack at 10 o'clock at night? I just said Antifa coming out the next month says they're going to get violent. They're going to attack overnight. They'll probably hit after 10 o'clock at night. It wasn't like some magic thing. Uh, but, yeah, I got contacted by the FBI about that, too. And this is serious business. Uh, but, uh, Zach, in, in just two minutes, recap what you said and give us other intel on motive, because you've given us amazing information in the last six months. Sure, absolutely. And, you know, I'm going to discuss some of this stuff because it is, it's gotten too far and ethically it's just out of control at this point. Um, so you have to put everything into perspective in the context of during this whole war, these wars in Libya and Syria where they're destabilizing the region, there were legitimate private military companies given hundreds of millions of dollars to kind of, you know, create this war there. So when you have a new administration come, in, come into power and they're no longer, you know, getting those paychecks, it's not like they pick up new hobbies. OK, there's still guns for hire and they're still working. And technically, um, there's still ongoing investigations. So I believe that Trump in the White House is aware of what's going on. This is a battle within, I guess you could call the deep in the legitimate government, because the reason that there were multiple teams there is because they were aware of what's going on. And the reason that some of these Saudi interests are allowed to be there, or how can they be there? What's going on? They have certain diplomatic immunities and there's ongoing you know, projects and uh, missions going on. So just to recap. And there's a civil war within the Saudis. A lot of the Saudis want to do what Trump says and actually stop this. And so is, is this a civil war to what, embarrass Trump or what's going on? Well, this is ongoing. It's definitely to embarrass. Uh, I think it's way more severe than embarrassing Trump. This is a full out war on Trump. And there's a there's obvious push to assassinate him and, you know, carry out their agenda. But with, with this specific PMC that was there working, um, you know, this is pretty important, and if you notice the timeline, they, you have a war within what is the White House now and all these you know, quote-unquote intelligence agencies going on. On 60 Minutes on Sunday, you also have the Emir of Qatar coming out, okay, who was sanctioned by the Saudis, the, Bahra the Bahrainians, and all this other stuff. And we have our U.S. assets and our, and our legitimate PMCs in Qatar there. The Emir of Qatar talked about this this PMC that he kicked out of his own country, and then you have the Saudis attacking him. And remember three years ago, uh, Bandar Bush threatened the Russians for the Olympics, and he threatened the EU that if they didn't go along with the Syria takeover by the ISIS al-Qaeda forces, quote, we'll launch terror attacks inside uh, of your tourist zones. 
So is this the same thing the Saudis threatened Russia with? 100%. And this is, I mean, it's sophisticated. And, and the weirdness of it is, is they have backing sort of, I mean, <laughs> this quasi backing from the U.S., not the legitimate U.S. The deep state Obama folks. Exactly. So, and you know, so and you've got that Mueller that you know, took Islam off the radical list and won't let him investigate mosque. Uh, I think they bit off more than they can chew. And, and so I think that's why the HRT told me there's an Islamic connection. It gave me all this info that later came out to be true about him being there earlier and the sh shooting inside the hotel. But then they got shut off. They don't know what's going on now. Uh, but uh, there's other stuff I can't tell people that's just unbelievable. Really? The, here's the thing. They want us to believe other stories. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, I mean, down to the point of I can't, uh, I can't talk about it. But you're absolutely on target, Zach. The symbology, and nobody's kind of picking this up, but the symbology from a from a real meta perspective of having the Luxor in the background is just so bizarre. Yeah, that's the Middle East, level. that's the Arabs, that's the Muslims killing killing the rednecks. This this is this is serious, and I, I'm just going to tell you right now, and I don't want to rattle anybody, but between November one and November five, PMC contractors are. Or the as far as max contracts go, I mean, um, there's a lot going on this, in the next, I don't know, six days, five, six days, there's a lot going on. Um, there's obviously active threats as we speak, but this is a real issue because you technically can't put this stuff and televise it, you know. You know to the well, I've always said there. this, I've always said this, though, that Antifa is the cover for the real paramilitary muscle. And the fact that they brought in all these giant Islamic paramilitary uh, contractor groups, what you're saying all is clicking. How many people you're talking to in the uh, military there in Florida with the Special Operations Command and people, how many people are aware of this? It's Everyone's talking about it. And the reason I'm on right now is there's kind of a certain panic now. The, there, there's just no moral efficacy here. It's, it's, it's gone out the window and the sides have been drawn. When you have and now there's a drill for the power to be knocked out November 4th. Oh, oh, yeah, there's a drill, and, 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 and they've planned this stuff well in advance. And I'm just telling you, there are – it's been as active as it's been probably since 2011 when it comes to PMCs being active. This is stateside. So they could say they're – Well, here's the deal. Here. If the globalists let these Islamic groups hit us on November 4th, Trump has to take the gloves off against their leadership. Boom. And I, and I know the military already knows that, but the military loyal to the U.S. should be target on right now all these enemies. I mean, everybody should be pointed at them right now. And then they need to be, if they launch concerted Bolshevik terror attacks in this country, they've got to be decapitated. I'm, I'm not talking talk big here, folks. We're major in the bullseye for saying things like that, but I'm not putting up with it. This was a blackmailing tactic. This, this, the shooting was a, an intelligence. Exactly. Shooting. Go after yeah. the casinos. Go after the bread and butter. Exactly. To show you what they're capable of, you know, they're not backing down. They're, they pulled this off in, in Vegas on the first there to show, say, hey, you know, this is where we're at. And well, that's what I got told by my sources. They said, we can't give you the intel. This is from the White House days later. We're told this is a trigger from larger Islamic attacks. But what that really meant was it's already an Islamic attack. We don't want to go there. And it is Islamic. And this is where they blur the lines, because when you say Islamic, they immediately go to a foreign threat.